This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. So if you look up to pick up Magic the Gathering cards, other trading cards, or some box set Warhammer they were selling Kill Team last time it came around, check out the link in the description below. Cheaters! We all fucking hate them. We expect to be able to play a hobby game like 40k or a card game like Magic without being scummed by somebody that can get a cheap advantage. But unfortunately, some people will cheat to win a game of Plastic Soldiers or the high, high accolade of winning a tournament. I'm not going to get into the pop psychology behind why people might cheat. It's just an unfortunate reality of the games we play. It is objective fact that there are cheaters out there. I don't think cheating is as rampant as some claim. There are some pretty <laughs> shitty content creators out there and bitter people on Facebook groups who claim all high levels of Warhammer or Magic or whatever is filled with cheaters. This is clickbait sensationalism. This is complete bollocks. This is people being bitter that they're not very good so they claim that everyone who is good is cheating. I don't believe it's as rampant as those people make out. However, undeniably, people do cheat. With so many moving parts in Warhammer 40k, it is inevitable that someone might be able to obfuscate the details or hide some dice or knock some models and get an unfair advantage. In this video, this episode of Warhammer Wednesday, I'm going to talk about the cheats that I'm aware of, some of the examples that I've heard of in recent time, or that are out there on the internet if you're looking for the clips, and I'm going to talk about how to spot them and avoid them going forward. I'm saying that I'm not going to name and shame the majority of these. Some of these are anecdotes that I have had uh, physically in a game that I can't say for certain was a cheat, but it very much looked like one. Other ones are second-hand anecdotes. A couple of them are more infamous, and I might mention the names there. But the main reason I'm not going to do is that I'm not looking to witch hunt some of these players have come back to the game to improve and grow as a person, apparently. I want this to be more about enjoying the hobby and playing the game and avoiding people like this. But I don't want it to be about a big circle joke about a couple of people that we should all be fucking harassing. That's not what I'm looking for there, okay? Discuss in the comments, go off and Google it, look on Reddit. There, some of these things are going to be very obvious who I'm talking about, but I'm not looking to name and shame. With all of that out of the way, let's get into some examples of how you can cheat in Warhammer 40k and what you should look out to try and avoid this happening to you, whether this be at a local game store or a big tournament. And again, neither of those are exempt from this and neither of these they happen more or less. There are just some people floating around who are those kind of people that would cheat in these kind of situations. Let's start with hidden dice. This is an anecdotal example of a very specific cheat and I want to expand it into the wider area of hiding your dice from your opponent. But this is something that happened at either the last Bath or Bristol GT. For example, I can't remember the anecdote that I was told. But the person told it to me, I trust them. A player was placing a singular die, one dice on a six, in a central piece of terrain. So then when it came to either rolling for first turn, where you need to roll highest as you possible, so a six is good, or rolling for your first big charge in your first turn, you roll your dice and you roll them so they go behind a piece of terrain. And you say, whoopsie, my dice went behind the terrain. Then you reach in and you slide it out because in Warhammer, you've got to make sure people don't think you're cheating, right? You slide it out. But you don't reach the dice when you've rolled a one or a two. You, roll, you slide in and grab the planted six. This allows you to get first turn if you're playing like an alpha strike army or it allows you to make that first clutch nine or 10 inch charge more favorably or more likely. And yeah, you can see why that might be good, for example, right? Getting into a charge that you probably wouldn't have made without cheating. Or getting first turn and shooting half your opponent's stuff off the table. Hell, you can even deploy more aggressively because the chances of you not getting first turn are much slow lower when you're a fucking cheater. It is a fucking scummy thing to do, as most, if not all, of the cheats on this list are. But it's also kind of brave in a way because this is one of those ones that can be spotted quite easily by someone else around you. It can be spotted by your opponent if they're incredibly vigilant. How do you avoid this where you ask to roll out on the open, you roll in a dice tray, or if it rolls into a building you ask them to re-roll it. Those sorts of things. Mainly out on the open in a dice tray. You can be super vigilant, you can walk around a table, you can chat from different angles and stuff as you start, but having to be super fucking vigilant all the time is not the best piece of advice because a game of Warhammer will take you around three hours, right? Maybe more in a casual setting, maybe a little bit less if you're both efficient, but being vigilant for three hours and that's the first of like three, four, or even six rounds in a weekend is exhausting. Part of the reason why cheating is fucking shit, right? It's ruining everyone else's enjoyment. Let's talk about obscuring your dice rolls. Similar to the hidden dice, singular planted dice, we have just obscuring them via terrain. There is obscuring terrain walls in 40k, of course, but they're not meant to be for your fucking dice. As the example we have here, which was caught on camera, where a player is rolling his shots behind a tall L-shaped building that an opponent can't see through, yeah, but the camera above can. Either the player in question somehow forgot they were on stream, or they cheat so regularly that it's just second nature to them like a reflex, 
or they're fucking stupid. Which one is it? It doesn't matter to this point. They were firing some guns from a Plagueburst crawler. They are plague weapons. So they have all the dice. And any rolls of one in the wounding roll can be re-rolled with plague weapon. What they were doing was saying plague weapon and picking up a four to re-roll it to try and get the uh, five that they needed. The person committing this cheat was incredibly high profile. One of the best players in the world. So they probably just trusted that they were doing the plague weapon stuff behind that building correctly. However, it was spotted on camera along with a few other suspect things that got them a year-long disqualification from the ITC. So they got caught, thank fuck, but is a year-long really enough to make someone repentant enough that they won't come and do this again on fucking camera? How to avoid again? Ask people to roll out in flat spaces on the, on the map or use a dice box or dice tray. Don't let people roll stuff behind buildings. It's going to create cocked dice and slow the game down anyway, and it also gives them room to cheat or again, just slow the game out. They've got a slide dice out for you to see. Just roll in the open or in a dice box. If your opponent continues to not do what you're asking, please do call a TR or a judge. What Magic the Gathering has taught me is that calling a judge or a tournament organizer is not a bad thing. I just punched my desk as I said that by accident as I was gesturing, gesticulating. But my point is, it's not to be frowned upon to get TOs or judges involved. They are there to make things run smoothly and cleanly, to deal with arguments that you're not going to resolve very easily yourself if your opponent's being stubborn, shall we say. Fuck it, in Magic, if you make a mistake where you've cheated by drawing too many cards or you haven't unsideboarded or your deck's wrong or something like that, you call a judge on yourself. There's like a self, an onus on self-responsibility that helps to get cheating to be probably less prevalent in magic than it is in Warhammer. A quick side one on obscuring terrain. This is not going to happen at a tournament, but this will happen at your local game store, and I've seen it happen with my own two eyes, is that players that have been playing Warhammer for quite a while and pride themselves on being one of the, the local sharks at the local store, one of the better players that everyone looks up to, well, they might just be playing the terrain rules wrong, maybe because they don't know them, or it might just be that they're kind of forgetting and or don't want to learn the new ones because it makes their old models and armies worse. Seeing a player teach another newbie how to play the game and just shooting their shit off the table, A, that's not a very constructive way to learn how to play 40k, and B, having no terrain counters obscuring whatsoever. This is some old school I've been playing since I was six and don't want to learn the new fairer rules shit. Again, not happening at a tournament, but keep an eye out for this in your local store and perhaps, as I have done, politely interject and try and teach people about obscuring terrain so people who are playing melee armies aren't completely fucked by someone bringing three fucking repulses to an event. On top of rules mistakes, let's talk about rule blunders. This is one of the harder ones to catch and probably one of the genuine mistakes that happens that might appear to be cheating if there's a pattern, but it might just be genuine mistakes. Something I do want to add at this point in the video is that you can't play a game of Warhammer 40k without making a fucking mistake. The game is needlessly complex. There are codices and supplements and warzone books and white dwarves and FAQs. The game is bloated. I don't think the game is bad, but I think it is a bit too bloated. And that will often lead to these problems, where people won't know what the fuck's going on, or they'll miss a rule, misinterpret a rule, or misunderstand how a rule has been changed. It can happen. There's an example of this in the game that I just showed you a clip from a second ago, where the quite prominent player is making five up fill no pain saves for their poxwalkers, the little zombies. Death Guard used to have a five up fill no pain across the army called Disgustingly Resilient in 8th edition. In 9th edition it's now a damage reduction by one incoming, to a minimum of one obviously, on all marine units. The poxwalkers don't have it and they had their fill no pain changed to a six up. So every wound they take they roll a dice and on a six they ignore it. However, some players might still remember that's a five up because of how it was for, you know, two years, three years. In the case of this one, I don't believe that's what that player is doing because they're so prominent and so famously good at this game. It's, well, well, they're good because they're fucking cheating, right? But they weren't getting that wrong. Another good example of this is transhuman physiology, a one CP strap for the Space Marines, which allows the a, a Primaris Space Marine to use their physiologically power empowered body with gene seed and shit to be tankier, to be resistant to damage more so than they normally. This used to be an eighth edition usable on any Space Marine. God, I'm starting to doubt my own notes now. I believe that was the case. It's been a little while since we played 8th, right? In the current Space Marine Codex, it's only on Primaris Marines. But people will sometimes forget this because it's just not common that you don't play Primaris. And they might try and put it on their Terminators or their Attack Bikes or their Devastator Marines or their Vanguard Veterans. They're the four really common firstborn units. This has happened to me on multiple occasions and it has, I believe, been a genuine mistake every time. Hell, I think I have also brain farted and tried to use it on like a non-Primaris character in the past as well. There is virtually no way of really knowing barring getting a vibe with someone's doing this 
getting a stratagem wrong or getting a rule wrong on purpose. However, if your opponent is making a chain of mistakes that you are noticing and they're all in their favor, then that is a trend that might suggest they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. We need to normalize the idea of checking a rule book. Please ask someone if you, especially if you're new, uh, can you show me that in your codex? That is completely and utterly reasonable. There was consideration around time wasting if you're at an event, but honestly, for the first use of a, a rule that seems a bit too good, by all means ask to see it in the codex. If someone acts shitty and don't want to show you it in their book, that would be alarm bells for me and it's quite unsportsmanlike. Don't feel afraid to ask someone to see a rule if you're like, fuck, that seems too good. Because sometimes it is too good because people get things wrong and sometimes it's on purpose. Weighted dice. Probably the most famous of cheats for any dice game, right? And I think it's fucking rare in Warhammer. There is an element of both pre and now post a pandemic, not the pandemic's over, but in the world we live in after it, where people will share dice at a table. If I, if you're trying to play fast and you make a lot of hits and wound rolls, you might want to pick up the opponent's dice to make the save rolls, which makes dice that are weighted, and by weighted dice, I mean dice that always roll high, for example, not necessarily an advantage because your opponent's going to make their saves as well. However, there is an anecdote from a GT last year where someone had brought one singular weighted dice to an event, and they only used it to roll for first turn, so they would often get first turn and be able to kill them with their Alpha Strike list, whether that be, you know, Iron Hand shooting with drop pods or Speed Wild back when it was busted a ship with all the out of line of sight shooting and that sort of stuff. They were caught, supposedly, when an opponent picked up their die to roll, you know, their roll for first turn, and they matched. And then they matched again. And then the opponent was like, this dice doesn't feel right. And they called a TO and they rolled it multiple times, getting the same or similar result. And that person was found to have one singular weighted die. They used for first turn, then they'd pocket or hide or not use for the rest of the game as to not get spotted. That person was DQ'd supposedly, but again, anecdotal, secondhand information, not naming and shaming. I do think it took some fucking balls just to call a TO over and go, ah, do you think this dice is weighted? But I'm, I'm here for it. More power to that person. Movement phase. This is the other one that might just be new players fucking it up. But for example, when you measure your distance to move a tank, if you measure from the front of the vehicle to here, and then you move the back of the vehicle to here, you're gaining the length of the vehicle in movement. A very common mistake, but some people might use the, to their advantage knowing it's a common mistake that people don't notice. There's also lazy or hurried movement too, where you're like, trying to get through your game before your clock runs out or before the store closes and you're just shuffling things around a bit too haphazardly and gaming an inch or two here and there. My favourite example of this that happened to me was a Drukhari. For some fucking reason against me, it's always the Drukhari players. I would shot one of their boats and blown it up and a succubus and seven witches fell out the other side. And they put them out of range of my Sagittarium. So my Sagittarium had nothing to shoot for turn. We roll around to their turn where they roll and advance for the succubus and they get a six. So the succubus moves six plus seven, 13 inch. The witches roll a three which gives them seven plus three is ten inches a three inch gap a three inch gap is, is that even three inches that's three inches i don't fucking know i'm really bad with measuring by eye anyway but it's a significant gap the witches end up touching the succubus's base which means they moved what the same distance maybe an inch less i asked them to confirm was it a three that they rolled and they said yes and I told them, because I watched it happen, that they were a six on the succubus. To which they said, I think so. So then I asked them, how could a nine and a 12 be touching base? And they were like, "Ha, oh, that is weird. Let me just check. And they start reshuffling back and forth and back and forth, measuring as if by somehow measuring it will change the laws of physics or some shit. That measurements will get shorter and distances will shrink. They then end up repositioning them uh, like on the other side of where the boat was, closer to me. And they're pausing to think and consider with a tape measure. I explained to them, actually, I think they're on the other side of the boat when they got out. And they said, no, I don't think so. And then I measured 36 inches and said, well, my Sagittarium can fire 15 shots of heavy bolter at them then. And that's hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, and wounding on twos, re-rolling uh, re on threes, re-rolling ones. And they were like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll put them on the other side then. It could be that they made a mistake. It could be that they were rushing. It could be that they were tired. I give them all this benefit of the doubt because I think that's what you have to do. Warhammer doesn't work if you hold everyone to stringent, stringent, strict fucking standards. We will have to give you a little bit of leeway because the game is bloated and confusing and takes a while to play, even if it is fun. But I will never forget the fucking 13 and 9 being the same distance and then the boat bit afterwards. 
Woof. But don't worry, the Sagittarium are ever watchful for a little cheat. On the topic of movement, there was an infamous example of a top level pro who got banned for a year, I think. Um, from certain events, not all events. Warhammer 40k competitive is kind of messy. Where they on camera nudged a tank by banging a water bottle into the back of it when their opponent wasn't looking. But it got seen on camera. Fucking hell. This obviously allowed them to get closer and have uh, be in range for shooting on their turn. It's all a bit fucking much, really. Come the fuck on. Be a bit more honest with yourself and other human beings for the love of fuck. That person then went on to win a GT this year in England. Not the best look for competitive 40k. Slow play. A player taking a shitload of fucking time so the game doesn't get to its na natural conclusion at turn 5. Meaning you only play 3 turns. Meaning if they've got like an advantage in the early game that they can run away with that and you can't possibly squat past that, right? The way to stop this is chess clocks, but chess clocks are stressful, and I've used chess clocks to try and stop this before, and it's been a hindrance. On two examples of this sort of slow play thing, on the chess clock side, I had an opponent, again, the only opponent across seven rounds of 40k in a weekend, so, oh no, it was, not, it was nine rounds of 40k in a weekend, so it's 10% of players doing this, not everyone is that guy or a cheater. But what they were doing was, well, they were clocking onto me and then failing to clock back onto themselves quite consistently. They were very vigilant about clocking onto me when I was was doing rolls for saves but not back again burning my time on top of that though they could see that i was stressing out about the clock and they were volunteering information and rules info and and worrying about like how we measure to hull on a doomsday arc or some shit uh even when i was like figuring out what i was charging not shooting it was all very weird and i had to say with all due respect stop volunteering it, unimportant information to me right now. You can tell I'm flustered by this clock. Please give me some time to think without distracting me. And um, they didn't like me being very upfront about that, but sometimes you have to be. And we should accept and be willing to have people talk like that if we need to get fucking down to brass tacks and finish a game of Warhammer. The other one, again, a Drukari player, where we got to turn three, they were playing very fucking slow. Uh, we weren't using a chess clock because it's quite a casual event. And we didn't finish, uh, we didn't have time to finish our fourth turn. We just started turn four and we couldn't finish. And it's very obvious, I think there was like two points in it, that I was going to get ahead on primary because I had killed most of their stuff. And I was going to win if we pointed it out to turn five. And they said, there's just no way we can look into the future. There's too many variables at this stage. I was tired and wanting to be casual. So I said to them, look, I'm not going to argue with you. I just think what you're doing is not very sportsmanlike. Also, which made it worse was that earlier in that game, they had fucked up their sequencing, but it, they killed a thing they had to keep alive to fire a grenade at it to trigger this thing where all Drukari can charge it, on, advance and charge a turn earlier on turn one. They fucked it up. They just killed the thing that was in range of the grenade and fucked it up. And when they realized, they asked politely if they could go back and not kill the thing they did. And if we were playing for keeps, so I wouldn't have done it, but it was a casual thing, so I let them. I let them do a huge takesy backsies and then they fucked me on score later. Again though, six games of Warhammer that weekend, one of the opponents was a dickhead, five weren't. It's the minority, not the majority. And then one of the most egregious examples of cheating is the army list being incorrect. This is a funny one for me. The first bit of army list being incorrect is your WYSIWYG, right? What you see is what you get. Where your marines or your Drakari or whatever, they have the weapon that they have got written down on their army list. This allows people not to literally cheat by saying to one player, oh, it's carrying a plasma gun, and to another player, it's carrying a bolter, because one of those guns is good in that matchup and not the other, or so on and so forth. You are stuck to what you came with, what you spec for. So you can't be like uh, making shit up on the fly. The really funny example of this from last year was that someone had brought a list to a GT. I think it was Bath, actually, not to name any names, but Bath GT. And they had uh, two lots of suppressors and two lots of eliminators in their list. I think it was Iron Hands. Or should I say, on the table. On the list, they only have one of each of those. And they play like four rounds with no one noticing. Their fifth round opponent, I think it was fifth round, looked at their army list before the game, looked over to them and said, why have you got so many of X and Y? Suppressors and eliminators, I believe. Turns out they had submitted their army and just bought one extra of each of those units, put them 300 points or something over the 2,000 point cap. They were playing with 15% more models than anyone else at the, at the fucking event. Uh, they were disqualified. Good riddance to bad fucking rubbish, eh? The audacity, though, to hope no one will fucking check your list to what's on the table is very funny. In Magic events, there are random deck list checks, uh, deck checks, and I believe a lot of Warhammer events also do a bit of random check I was checking as well, but it should probably be more of that sort of thing to try and at least dissuade dickheads from trying this shit. There are many other cheats that I did not cover. 
there are many things like modeling for advantage making you taller or shorter you know marines lying down as opposed to standing up all that shit but i could probably go on all day with all these minor cheats i think i covered some of the big ones with some interesting anecdotes that i thought were interesting please tell me in the comment section below if i missed something if there's an obvious example of cheating that i did not hear i don't need to hear whether you agree or disagree with cheating because cheating is fucking bollocks and people should be dq'd and banned from from games for cheating i believe that fucking strongly but let me hear about cheats in the comment section below that i might have missed or are pretty funny when you look at them thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video how about you watching a video about some shit products that gw wants to put out whoa <laughs> i'll see you all soon to tell for now